What's up, Bike Rumor fans? I'm Tyler, and this, well, this is not the kind of thing we normally review here. This is the KBO Breeze, a $1,500 commuter e-bike that quite honestly sits at the lowest end of the price spectrum of anything that we would consider roadworthy. So we kind of wondered, like, what do you get for $1,500? Is this thing gonna be any fun? Is it any good? Well, surprisingly, you get quite a bit, and yeah, it's actually kind of fun. Let's take a closer look. It comes with a 768 watt hour battery with Samsung LG cells. So even though it's not a name brand drive motor unit like you get with say Shimano or Bosch or Bros, it does have name brand battery cells and that's important. You get up to 55 miles of riding per charge and it comes with a three amp quick charger that'll top it off in just five hours. It's propelled by a 500 watt continuous output hub motor with 750 watt peak output spikes and it can handle a 300 pound payload capacity. Those numbers are all well and good and actually they're pretty solid, especially for a bike at this price point, but how does it actually ride? Well, it's very peppy. That's a lot of power and it was easily enough to push me up hills, bridges, whatever, no problem at all. They say it will assist up to 25 miles per hour plus, and that plus is sort of ambiguous because they don't rate it as a class one or class three, but we were riding along with some other of our class three e-bikes that will max assist up to 28 miles per hour and they were having a hard time keeping up or at least staying even with this thing. So it's a lot of power. And that kind of brings me to the next point where that power comes on really abruptly. And that's because it's using a cadence sensor as opposed to a torque sensor. And that's a big difference between more refined systems from like Shimano and Bosch, where it's using the amount of effort that you're putting into it to gauge how much assist to give you. With this one, once you start pedaling, it senses pedaling motion, a cadence, and it just full power. So the way you control the amount of assist it gives you is with the little thumb pad up here. It goes from levels one through five. So as opposed to it automatically helping you more when you're pedaling a little bit harder, you have to tell it how much help you want by throttling it up or down with the plus and minus buttons here. So it is a pedal assist bike, but it also has a throttle. So over here is the throttle. And ah, <laughs> that's actually exactly what I was hoping to show you, even though I didn't want to almost drop the bike because the same thing kind of happens when you get on the bike first and take off, right? Like where the other e-bikes that use some torque sensitivity to ease you into the power with this one, like if you got on the bike and just kind of like rolled forward, you're going to lurch forward. So it could create a little bit of a dangerous situation if you're not quite ready for it. And that's sort of my one big beef with this bike is that at this price point, with these specs, this is really aimed at an entry level rider or somebody that just wants something to get from point A to point B and wants an e-bike. So they're maybe not the most sophisticated rider, maybe not the most confident rider, and they could get into a little bit of trouble because of the way the power is delivered on this. Now, that said, it's also pretty fun, pretty fast, and you know those times when you just wanna go, you don't wanna get to work, you wanna get to school, point A to point B, you wanna go meet some friends and you don't wanna get all sweaty on a, hot, sunny, muggy summer day like this, that throttle's kind of fun, I'm not gonna lie. So the throttle itself will only assist up to 22 miles per hour and that's pretty accurate. We actually like, on a, on a steeper uphill, it would nudge me along at like 13, but as soon as it levels out, it got right up to 22 and just stopped and just held steady at 22. So the numbers are pretty accurate. It does seem to last a long time on a full charge. And the fact that it'll fully charge in like five hours is pretty impressive for such a big battery. The battery's removable. So when this one wears out after like 900 charge cycles, you can pop a new one on. Or if you need a spare, you can buy a spare and pop that on when you need it. All right, I wanna talk about some of the other features in geometry this, but I got one more quick note about that, that power delivery. So because it's not torque based and instead it's cadence based, for me as like a cyclist, you know, like a, a real rider, it was just not as refined as I've come to expect from other bikes. But then again, those other bikes cost four, five, six, ten, twelve thousand $12,000. This is $1,500. So you kind of get what you pay for. And that's not a knock against this. It's just that you're gonna get more of everything when you pay more for another bike. So when I put my other friends on this, friends that aren't cyclists, they loved it. My kids absolutely love it. Like it is a fun bike. It's just not what you would expect from something that costs two to three to four to heck, 10 times more. Okay, in terms of ride quality, 
it's fine. The frame is plenty stiff enough. You don't notice any flex anywhere in your riding or turning and stuff like that. It comes with an 80 mil travel suspension fork that is surprisingly squishy. And I say that in the best possible way because it actually soaks up really rough terrain. And when you hit a little gravel section or a bunch of potholes and all that stuff, it works really, really well. Even as soft as it is, I haven't been able to like bottom it, even dropping off some curbs and stuff. So in that regard, the fork is great. Where I don't like it is that the fork has a lot of flex. So when you brake really hard with the front brake, it's gonna shudder. And that might scare some people a little bit when they have to do some emergency braking, but you really have to grab a lot of brake for that to happen. And no, grabbing a lot of brake is not gonna endo this thing because it's a 65 pound bike. So those brakes are not powerful enough to flip you over the front. Another thing contributing to the ride quality are these big 27.5 by 2.4 inch tires. And while there's a lot of no name brand stuff on this, they actually do have Panaracer tires on there. So I'm impressed with the fact that they spec a good quality tire on this bike and it shows. The grip is great, traction's great, ride quality is great from the tires. The other aspect of ride quality is handling. And this is where, again, like all of my non-cyclist friends and my kids, they all love it. They didn't notice the thing, they didn't care. For those of us that geek out on bikes and are really just total bike nerds, a couple things I noticed. The reach, the kind of like the cockpit space here is about anywhere from like two to four centimeters, maybe even five centimeters shorter than a lot of other e-bikes in this in this category, especially for this size. So there really is no size. This is a one size fits most. It's, you know, I would call it probably a large, but it's designed to fit from riders from five foot four inches to six foot four inches. I'm six two, it fits me great, and I've still got some room to bring this up. So it's probably designed for somebody closer to the middle of that range because for me it feels just a little bit cramped, and a lot of my taller friends did the same thing. It's just it's a little bit cramped, even though you have a nice upright riding position, which is great for a commuter bike, um, a little bit short in here. So the other thing that I noticed is the head angle is very steep. And the funny thing is they don't even list that measurement on their geometry chart. So I couldn't tell you what the head angle is, but it is steep. I put it up next to some of the other bikes and it's like noticeably visually steeper. And what that translates into is it's a little bit twitchy at slow speeds and it's just not quite as stable at high speeds. So my daughter loves to ride with no hands on the bar. She's a little less apt to do it on this bike. It's not dangerous by any means, but it is something you notice when you've ridden a lot of bikes that I feel more confident at speed on other bikes than I do at this one. Okay, let's talk pros and cons. So the good stuff is this bike comes with a full-size aluminum rear rack with a hefty load rating. You can attach panniers to it, rack bags. You could even put a child seat on it. It's rated for all of that. You get full coverage aluminum fenders. You get integrated headlight and a rear brake light. So when you squeeze the rear brake lever, the brake light flashes to let people know that you're slowing down. You do get a powerful motor and it charges fast and the battery lasts a long time. Those are all great things for any e-bike to have and this one has it. Is a comfortable saddle and it has a nice lift handle in the back to make it easier to lift this bike say onto a bike rack or carry it upstairs. It also comes with a sturdy kickstand which is great because these e-bikes are heavy and you really need a strong kickstand for them. Okay so there's actually a lot to like about this bike but I do have a few cons, a couple of things I want to talk about. My two biggest ones are the stuff I mentioned, the flexi fork with it's kind of like at too steep of an angle and the fact that the power delivery is really unrefined. Those are the two big ones. But there's a couple of little things that I just wanted to point out. So the first is the grips, uh, as comfortable as they are with the ergonomic shape, they do twist. They can they twist pretty much on every ride, they come down. So that's really easy to fix. Just replace them with some lock-on grips, you know, some ergons that have that same wing shape. Good to go. That solves that problem, cheap and easy. The other thing is the Shimano shifter. While I really appreciate it, this is a full Shimano drivetrain, the shifter is just so unergonomic and so clunky to use and, and, and really too far out of the way. You have to really reach over across the throttle to get to it and activate it. So it's not my favorite shifter in the world. And lastly, it's just the fact that it only comes in one size is a little bit of a downside because it's really, I feel like it's optimized for somebody in the middle and that like kind of five, eight to six foot range there. And so it's a little bit less than optimal fit for people on the shorter or the taller end of the spectrum. That said, honestly, it's fine, you know, and I've had people that are like five, six on it and they were perfectly comfortable riding it too. So it does fit a wide spectrum of rider sizes. 
Okay, so bottom line, the KBO Breeze is a extremely affordable commuter bike with a great feature set for the price that's powerful and maybe just a little bit too fast for its own good, but certainly a lot of fun. If you're a cycling aficionado, there's gonna be plenty of little stuff you could nitpick about, but we're not the target market. If you're looking for something affordable to just get to and from work or school, something to kick around the neighborhood on, maybe put a kid's seat on the back and groceries on the side, this thing is gonna get that job done really, really well and put a big smile on your face. If you wanna see more pictures, the full list of tech specs and pricing and options and all that other stuff, head over to bikerumor.com, just search KBO or hit the link in this video's description. And as always, thanks a ton for watching. If you like this and you want more great biker videos and killer tech videos, hit like, hit subscribe, and we'll see you next time. Until then, keep the rubber side down.